Well, we've already got quite a few videos on our site about using thick water-based glass paint for pipe and peel work, making peelies, stickers, whatever you want to call them. So I thought I would do a video showing how you can use the same paint to do more ordinary glass painting. Well, I'm going to paint this vase. As you can see, it's square, quite nice flat surfaces. And the designs I've chosen to use are in a sort of Claris Cliff style. If you haven't come across Claris Cliff before, look them up. Mostly pottery um, type designs. Very good for glass painting. I like them a lot. And we will talk more about designs in another video. So as you can see, I've already outlined one design there. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm only going to do the two sides. But if you were to do all four, then you'll want to prop that side rather than putting it straight down on the surface. So prop the opposite side so you don't squash the outlining. But I'm going to outline this side and there's other videos again with outlining on. So I won't go into it in depth and we'll get on quite quickly to the painting so I can show you a couple of techniques of using the thicker water-based glass paint on objects like this. Now, you may not be able to see, but this glass is quite thick. So all I can do is use the design as a rough guide. But it won't be exactly the same and that doesn't matter. Okay, we should leave that to dry now. As normal, if there are any bits I don't like once it's dry, I can cut those out and touch them back up again. And once it's, I'm happy with it, then we can get on with the painting. Right, I've completed the outliner. It's all dry, I've checked it, I'm happy with it. So I'm ready to start painting. Now for some of the painting, you can do it in the normal way. Uh, with these flowers, I'm just going to use the paint direct from the tube as long as it comes out. There we go. Ooh, bit of a big bubble there. Perhaps not quite as much as I'd normally use when I'm doing pipe and peel. But using it straight from the tube like this is going to give it a bit of texture, which is what I want on these flowers. Now I'm just going to finish that off by using my paintbrush to make sure there's no bubbles in there and that everything's covered and the paint is right up to the outliner. Same as you would do with normal flood fill. So this isn't quite as thick as I would normally use the paint when I'm doing pipe and peel work. There we go, I think there might be one or two more spots I'll do. Like that one and that one. Maybe these little ones down here. And there we go. So that's almost like normal pipe and peel work, just not quite as thick. 
Now, for other areas, I want a smoother finish. So, if I grab from over here, this is just a plate covered with a little bit of cling film. Again, as long as it comes out, which it's obviously not going to, I'm just going to put a little bit of paint on there. Well, a fair amount. There we go. Now, as it's water-based paint, hopefully, I should be able to water it down. Now, this is just clear water. Whoops. And not too much. If you do too much, it may crack when it dries. But a little bit of water there. Now, I'm mixing this carefully. I do not want to introduce too many bubbles into the paint but I do want to make it a little more free running and I'll have just a little a few more drops and probably I don't know about between 15 and 20 percent water there now now, if I do get some bubbles in there, I'm going to have to remove them. Now, this should make it a much more flowing paint. So, the blue, believe it or not, is for the leaves at the top here. And lift that paint across. those bubbles out. You don't want the bubbles in your work. And make sure I get right up to the line. And this is going to be a lot smoother, hopefully, than that thick paint I used on the flowers. Now, I'm going to do what I continually say not to do. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I haven't got any white paint in the same make. So I'm going to use a different type of white paint and try and mix them. They are both water-based. but I don't know what else is in the paints. But we will give it a try. So what I'm actually using is a homemade white paint. I'm just gonna put a bit in there because I want a lighter paint at the bottom. Don't want to contaminate it and I'm going to need a bit more. There we go. This is a little bit like working with uh, water-based paints, uh, watercolours. And I will also need a drop more water in there. There we go. I can see bubbles and I'll have to make sure I get them out. Now I'm going to let that dry, but I'm going to keep, keep a very close eye on it. And any bubbles I spot, I shall lift out. Or pop. So let's let all that dry and come back when it's finished. 
okay as you can see I've allowed that all to dry three things I've got left to do on this particular side I'm going to do these gaps in the clear mottled paint or the clear paint to give a mottled effect I should say this I'm going to try and do on the smoother paint which will be this color here and finally I am going to go over these three flowers again I want them to stand out a little bit more and there's not quite enough texture in them yet so I'm going to try going over those again so those are the three things I should do on this side then obviously I want to turn it round I'll complete that side and then we'll take some photos of it and see how it looks Again, I'm using the paint and I shall add a few drops of water to this. And hopefully that will make it a little bit smoother. Well, there's that finished. Now, these flowers should be quite simple. Just make sure the paint's coming out okay. I'm just saying, adding a little bit on there, try and get it to stand out a little bit more and give it a bit more texture. And lastly, but by no means least, I'm just going to put the clear mottle in these spaces. Right, once again, we shall leave that to dry and we'll finally be able to turn it round and do the last side. After that, we'll come back and see how it looks. Okay, well, as you can see, I've completed the two sides I wanted to do and I think it looks rather good. I would say that, wouldn't I? That's not to say there aren't things I would do differently if I were to do it again. Um, I suspect the white I thought I added to lighten the blue was in fact clear. It's not completely smooth, so I don't think I would mix brands again. I've never advised doing it. Um, I only did it this time because I didn't have the correct colors. But if you're gonna mix paints, try and make sure they're the same brand. It tends to work a lot better. But apart from that, I am quite happy with it. This color is a bit lighter than I suspected, but I have got the nice smooth finish where I wanted the smooth finish. And it does show you that you might have the thick water-based paints, but you can use them for other things other than just pipe and peel work. They can be used in this style of glass painting as well. So if you've got the thick peelable glass paints, why not give them a go using these techniques and see what you can come up with. Couple of final points. One, this can be wiped down, but don't soak wash it. But it can be wiped down with a damp cloth, that isn't a problem. Secondly, don't add water to your thick paints if you are going to want to peel it. Um, adding water makes it less peelable, it makes it break, etc. So it's great for doing work like this, but don't add water if you're going to want to peel what you've made. Okay, have fun. Hope you've enjoyed the project. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, please do so if you want. Um, or more importantly, perhaps our email list and we can let you know when there's new projects and videos, etc. out. If you're watching this on YouTube and haven't visited our website yet, please do pop across. We've got free designs, lots of projects, lots of tips, techniques, etc. for you to have a look at. Okay, happy crafting. Toby! Good boy, come here. Ugh. Right, you behave. Stop this barking. Okay, you stop the barking. Thank you. Be good. <laughs>